isn't good. We've got a substantial leak. The awning is out. Our awning is out, and I'm not sure where this might be coming from, but it's coming in right here at the upper window. Let me get something to soak this up. With it cleaned up, now we can see how substantial the leak is. Drip. Do you have a screwdriver in here? Yes, we do. Let's take that frame off. All right, we'll pull the window frame off and see what's you going on fire? behind it. Ooh. Yeah, got a storm, don't we? All right, Andrew is going to pull that off. And I'm gonna sit here with an ice pack. What did you find? Our awning screw is leaking. There's a drip that keeps forming on it um, where it goes to the um, exterior of the body. And so I'm gonna wad up a dish towel here and hold it and see if that um, at least contains it for now. But we can easily take that screw out and then reseal it with some parbond and hopefully that solves the problem. Yeah, as far as this goes, I don't think there's any benefit to sealing it on the inside. It really is water coming through. Okay. So if we seal it on the inside, we'll just kind of dam it up. Um, but we need to keep it from getting inside the body. Um, so we need to seal it from the outside. Yes, I think so. It hasn't rained hardly at all. This screw right here is where the water's weeping in. I'm going to see if I can tighten it right now and just see if that changes anything. Grabbed a big screwdriver here and I'm going to try to tighten this screw a little bit. Maybe a bad idea to try to do in the rain. I am able to turn this just a little bit, which is not ideal. Um, not sure if over time it's worked loose a little bit. The benefit to finding a leak while it's raining is that you can trace the water back to the point of entry. But the drawback is that I can't really do anything about this until the trailer is dry. All right, I've gone and got the big screwdriver, tried to tighten it from the outside. That screw will not tighten. So I think that's a problem for another day. I've got, I think a good solution for this, but I'm gonna tackle it when it's not raining. Welcome back to Frog Lake. Hi, those hikers um, insisted I take a tip. Okay, okay. So. Um, that's a lot, but okay. It is a lot. Um, I, I don't, give people rides so that they they tip me it's the right thing to do um but they wanted to help and um, okay so that was a quick ride to government camp then yep i took them to govy dropped them off at the hotel and they were going to go to timberline and get their um food package that they mailed themselves and a bunch of stuff so okay but you know when you have an injured hiker if anybody needs a ride it's just the right thing to do but specifically the injured through hikers you what yep. they're putting their body through is exceptional, so. Yep. Just found a penny here in the Iron Ranger, and it's not a donation. What a penny means, according to our law enforcement friends that stop by um, and tell us a little bit about how people steal from these, a penny means they're putting it in the slot and they're listening for the plink off the metal plate in the bottom, or is the penny hitting an envelope? And if the penny is hitting a pay envelope, then there's something in here they can try to steal. So overnight there were no pay envelopes in this particular one, but now I've got to run over to the day use one and see if they've um, been after that one too. Hmm. Okay, so no envelopes in this one, no pennies in this one. Um, seems like no attempt to mess with it has probably occurred. So that's good news. Um, just gonna lock it back up. Here's some custom made tools one of our coworkers found in a ranger. That's black electrical tape wrapped around a weight, fishing line to pull the weight back up, and a bit of magnet to steer it. I just found something out, and yes, before we talk about the elephant in the room. It, it's swollen. Woo, um, let me just tell you what I found out. So apparently, as you know, our platform of choice is YouTube, but um, apparently, Andrew and I are becoming internet famous 
with the through hikers. There is an app that you can pay for segments of through hiking trails. So the Continental Divide, the Appalachian Trail, um, El Camino de Santiago de Compostela, and um, the PCT, the Pacific Crest Trail, which doesn't come directly through our campground, but a spur of it does. And the next segment of the trail is incredibly steep, incredibly hard, and water is hard to get if you're a slow mover. Andrew and I are known by name on this pay for app for being camp hosts here and being helpful or giving people rides or if they're injured, helping them and tending to them. And we're gaining notoriety on a platform that we don't have access to and I'm not gonna pay for. So random hikers wandering in, well not wandering, they don't, they don't wander. Let me tell you, every step is a calculated decision when you're going over 3,000 miles. Or, or some of them are just doing segments, but um, so a lot of them have started at this point at the Mexican border and are on their way to the Canadian border. So they ask for us by name. Oh, are you Andrew? Are you Shauna? And um, you guys are famous. Our notoriety isn't from doing anything other than being us and being helpful. So let's talk about this mess. Before you ask, no, I was not one wheeling. We're doing anything fun. So I twisted this one and scraped up this knee in Mescalero Dunes. And I have subsequently tw twisted it again really badly. Um, we drove down to urgent care all the way off the mountain and they were closed. And some very helpful person was super condescending and was like, Ugh. We should have called first. And I said, I have no cell signal, which is true. Team Wheeler is down by at least two thirds with me out of kitchen. Hey. Andrew has had to cook and clean for us. And uh, yep, he's doing a great job given the skill set that he has. It's all you got. <laughs> it's true, it is all I got. I talked to my manager, I told them, that I was injured, I might need urgent care, but I've been rocking a bag of peas and some ACE bandages, and on Monday we may go back down the mountain and try to squeak into an urgent care just to get an x-ray. This is worse than the Mescalera Dunes one, and I bit it right in front of um, checking the bathroom, and my first thought was like, oh my God, I'm in the bathroom dirt. Ah! And then I was like, I may have broken something but still I'm in the bathroom dirt. It was awful. I had to get Andrew on the radio and tell him to come get me in the truck as I gimped my way around um, to get up off the bathroom rocks. It was gross. And when something really bad happens and I pump on those evil little hand pumps, five gallons of water, I just have to toss the bucket into the bathroom and wash it out. That's where it lands, exactly where I did. I had a guy come to the door and knock and cause he was looking for the camp hosts and Andrew was cleaning the bathroom with the truck. And I was like knocking, just open my door, which makes people feel a little bit uncomfortable, like just to open the trailer door. But if we don't want someone to come in, we lock it. So, um, he realized I had a bum ankle and he was sort of looking at it and he was like, what do you have for entertainment? And I was like, there's no internet. There's, n I have nothing, I have nothing here. Um, and so he's like, oh, you could read a book. And I was like, so the book I have is about discovering moss. That's the only book I have. I was like, that's no Harry Potter. And he left. And this morning at 930, he knocked on the trailer door again. And he dropped me this book, Dune, which I'm super excited to read. Kindness. Uh, you know, they didn't have to give me this book. They could have gone on their way eating their morning bacon and eggs, and instead they remembered that their camp host is laid up and offered me a book to read, which is awesome. Dune, so excited! Rained for an entire day since we noticed the leak on this, so I didn't do anything with it yesterday. But I'm looking at this large headed screw right here, and that's the one that's causing the problem.
The solution up here to this screw problem is that I'm going to use a machine screw with a nut on the back and I'm gonna use some parbon to seal the um, hole through the body. That's gonna seal with the nut, everything's gonna tighten up and seal the leak and make the awning more secure. And it's gonna look basically the same as it did on the outside. So problem will be solved pretty quickly with that. How's it going out there? Oh, it's sick. It's a great time. I'm going to say it's not raining, but it's like Oregon not raining. It's definitely misting. Well, it's also like 45 degrees max. <laughs> yep, it's uh, lovely out here. I wish I was out there. Sorry. Um, so, basic plan here is to take out the one existing screw and put this one in with a nut on it so that we can tighten it down with some parbon and it won't leak. Okay. Might have two places to add some caulking here. One is along this little edge. It would be nice if that had parbon in it and then around and behind the screw as well. I should be able to put a screw back that looks exactly like that. That screw really is not tight enough. Basically seems hand tight. I am now tightening by hand at least to start the nut on the back side. Did you parbon the outside? I did. I feel and like back I'm... through the hole. And so I've got a washer that should have a sandwich of parbon up against the outside skin. And then nut coming in should have a uh, parbon layer. Okay. So good. it should be in good shape. Hopefully it stays dry enough for the next hour. Don't fall off that ladder. I can't have both of us out of commission. Yeah, no, it's um, uh... treacherous out there. I have deliberately put a little bit too much parbond around the threads of the screw just before it went tight. Make sure I've essentially made a washer of it. I'm gonna have to come back and clean that up. But this screw is essentially all the way in. Now I'm gonna go and put the nut on the back side and put some vice grips on it so it can't spin. Not my finest work, but it is self-leveling so it should look a little bit better as some time passes here and it dries over the next couple hours. Um, it does work when you use it on a slightly wet surface. So I'm confident that we've got a good seal here. Just gave a couple hikers right up to Timberline. Um, that's the ski slope, ski slope visible behind me. This is the last day of the ski season here up on Mount Hood. Told they close for the season today. Um, as their snow melts, they kind of keep push higher and higher up the slopes but they've been grooming that patch up there just before the fog um and that's what's available for skiing today and um yeah we had rain last night so i don't know how the conditions are but um there's plenty of people up here going for it so that's cool When you pay at the Iron Ranger, please make sure your payment goes all the way in. Today is Sunday, so we are, poor Andrew is going to be running day use and dealing with the campground and cooking for us. And on Sundays, I usually like between activities, I meal prep. So I make bread and soup and a bunch of different things so that we're ready to go for the week. And I also will know which ingredients I need to buy when we go down the mountain on Monday or Tuesday. So I'm going to backseat drive some bread making. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> First step, I'm going to go shave. Yeah, go do that. Mm -hmm. Ta-da! That's better. <laughs> Looks much better. Okay, let's get started. There should be a yeast packet clipped up to the side. Yep. I, I, try, to use, I try to use one yeast packet for two loaves, so... I've already made the first loaf. Go ahead and put that in the bowl. All right, four cups of flour, teaspoon salt, quick blend of dry ingredients. What's next? You add two cups of water into it and then have a third cup on standby. All right. You need to add the third cup of water a little bit at a time until it turns into a stretchy, sticky, goobery mess. Use the spatula type thing and scrape everything in to the parchment paper Dutch oven. Awesome. Put the lid on and I'll set a timer. In addition to the bread, which is rising, we 
Well, there's no we about it. I was just bossing you around. You made... Uh, banana bread with fresh blueberries. Mm -hmm. So we got some free bananas from somebody, and... Um, well, someone gifted us a whole fruit bowl. Right, right. And, uh, well, bananas are now in here. It's awesome. I've had some. Um, I think there's chocolate chips in it, too. Just a few. Just to give you a little, uh, little treasure hunt. Um, yeah, no, it was very good. Awesome. Okay, so it's not perfect. The shape isn't perfect, but it actually tastes really good. So I'm happy with it. I'm impressed. Good for you. Banana blooper bread looks delicious. Would you like some? I would. This piece is probably too much for me to eat. I'll share. Any updates on the foot this morning? <sighs> well, it would seem that I have a fracture. So that's unfortunate. I think I need my sunglasses. I just wanted to say thank you to Brent and Betsy Dane for your continued support. They used the buy me a coffee link in the description box below. This is not the first time they have chosen that method to support our channel. And I can't even believe what a wonderfully timed gift this was, especially in light of my foot situation. So thank you to Brent and Betsy, um, the Danes, we appreciate your continued support. And um, yeah, we'll see you in the next episode. Payment envelope's been. Yep, there's another one. What's not to understand?